Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. Today I want to talk about a subject that I see a lot of misinformation presented about in the science denial and in the flat earth community, and that is this, the nautical sextant. Let's take a moment and go over how a sextant works and what it actually measures. Now the purpose of a sextant is to measure angles, and for that it has an interesting system of mirrors. Let's bring these filters up for a second. Now when you're looking at an object like, say, a horizon, what happens is the horizon is out here, and you look through the telescope, through this horizon mirror, out to the horizon, and that forms one line of your angle. However, you want to measure the angle between that line and a star that's up above the horizon. So what you do is you take your index arm and your index mirror and you cause the light that comes down from that star to bounce off of this mirror and into your eyepiece. And what you will see is you will see the horizon and you'll see a star just above it. And what you do is make some fine measurements right here, including using this little vernier scale to make very slight movements. And you want to bring that star so that it lines up right on the horizon. Then you can read off the angle between your line of sight to the horizon and your line of sight up to the star using the scale right here, which is called the index scale. So let's look at this diagram and see what we are actually measuring. So if our location is right here, which is a certain height above the surface of the Earth. What we're doing is we're looking down to this horizon, and that is a right angle, and this is a tangent line to the surface of the Earth from your location. Now this angle right here is the angle on the index arm that is required to bring the star, which appears up in the corner, to line up with the horizon. So this is the raw angle of the sextant. From that point, we need to make a couple of corrections. Now, if we look at this particular point right here, that is a vertical and a right angle to this dotted horizontal line. This angle below the horizontal line is called the dip angle. And the dip angle includes height, refraction, and the curve of Earth. So by removing the dip angle, from our total reading, what we do is we actually get this horizontal. Next, we turn our attention to the star up in the sky. Now, as we look up at the star, we have to account for refraction of that star. That star will appear to be a little higher than it actually is, and that is this angle right here. This is the refraction angle. So when we get our sextant reading, we get the solid lines here. From that, we have to subtract the dip angle, which brings it up to horizontal, and then we have to subtract the refraction angle, and that gives us our final angle, which is our angle right here. This is a 90 degree to the vertical. What we do is we take 90 degrees from our zenith and subtract this angle right here, which is our corrected altitude of the star and that gives us this angle. This is called the zenith angle. Now the zenith angle is what we are taking the sextant reading to get because that tells us how many degrees we are from the geographic position of the star, which is the point where the star is at the zenith above the Earth. Now one thing that confuses a lot of people is that sometimes they will see a right angle symbol right here at the geographic position of the Earth. What that indicates is that the star is vertical or 90 degrees to the surface of the Earth from that point. It does not imply any sort of a triangle involving the surface of the Earth. The sextant does not measure triangles. It measures a single angle between a star and the horizon, for example. Then we put our corrections in and we get the corrected angle and then we subtract that from 90 degrees and we get our zenith angle, which is what we want. Now, what does the zenith angle tell us? Well, the zenith angle tells us that if the star is directly under my finger right here, depending on how many degrees my zenith angle is off of 90. So for example, if my zenith angle is 60 degrees, I subtract that from 90, it gives me 30. Then I multiply 30 degrees 
by 60 nautical miles per degree. That means that my position is on a circle on the surface of the Earth, 1,800 miles in any direction from that particular star's geographic position. So here is what we call my circle of equal altitude from the geographic position of a star, and here is the 1,800 miles. I will then combine it with another star has a circle of equal altitude that is 2,400 nautical miles from its geographic position. Now, as you can see very clearly, there are two points that these circles intersect. My position is at one of these two points. Now, obviously, these points of intersection generally tend to be quite a ways apart. So if you get one point of intersection in Hudson Bay and the other in the Bahamas, and you look out to the nearest landmass and you see a polar bear or you see a palm tree, you know which one you're at. Now to really tighten this up though, we will generally use a third geographic position of another star and try and get another circle and see where that circle intersects the first two, something like this. So here's our third circle of equal altitude and based on our zenith angle, we're 800 nautical miles from this geographic position and that circle intersects the first two at this point right here. That means that this point is our true location. One thing that I do want to mention about the sextant, most of the people in the science denial, flat earth conspiracy community that you see talk about the sextant have absolutely no idea how they work. They've never held one, they don't own one, they've never used one. I own a sextant and I've used it many times and I can easily find my location on the surface of the earth to within two nautical miles. And I'm not even a professional. The angle is this angle that we're measuring. It has nothing to do with the surface of the Earth. It simply is telling us how many degrees we are away from the geographic position of that star. So once again, if you ever hear anybody talk about triangles in celestial navigation or curved adjacents, they have no idea what they're talking about. The sextant does not measure triangles. It does not measure distances. And when you're taking a sextant reading, you generally do not see the geographic position of the star. You know it's in that general direction, and from your horizontal, the star is X number of degrees of altitude, and then you calculate your zenith angle from that. So, this is Bob the Science Guy. I hope that clears a few things up for you. Make sure you give me a follow, and we'll talk about this a little bit more another time. Take care, guys.